Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Syrah, Syrah, Syrah blends with Syrah in. That's the theme today. How many different countries have we got? France, uh, sorry, Chile, France, strange place. We will get onto that in a moment. France and Australia. Uh, but first one we've got is Chile. Uh, Doña Dominga, uh, which is the brand from uh, Casa Silva. And uh, so this is their single vineyard, uh, Shiraz, uh, from the Colchagua Valley. Give it a whirl. Sweet berries, um, biscuity reduction. Uh, there's this uh, little edge of uh, wafer biscuit there, and it smells like the fruit is going to be rounded, sweet, plump. Uh, weird thing is, when you see ch Colchagua on a wine, uh, you never know whether it's um, hot Colchagua uh, or cold Colchagua. Closer you are to the sea, the colder it gets. Get inland. It's torrid, I think, is a, a technical term for it. Here it smells it's like on the warm side. Rounded, sweet, um, plump, plush berry, juicy plum. Um, uh, I, I, that edge of reduction. Reduction is, is what people, the way in which people make their wine uh, in the absence of oxygen. What it uh, gives to a wine, sometimes it, uh, it accentuates certain perfumes. Sometimes it adds, if you overdo it, adds a rubbery character. Here it's almost verging on that rubbery edge. Uh, and it seems to have been done to... Um, disguise maybe that the, the grapes were just on that little bit too ripe uh, side in the first place. Um, so whereas I, I can't fault its intensity, uh, I don't want to drink very much of that. Um, I, hopefully that doesn't sound harsh and I will... Uh, the thing about reduction is uh, um, it, it does blow off with time so I'll keep an eye on that bottle and see what it's like. What time are we now? Quarter past one. Um, see whether it's uh, uh, it improves with a little bit of aeration but at the moment uh, I'm not holding out much hope for it. Hey, uh, next one I've got is, uh, we are in the Rhone Valley here, Jean-Luc Colombo, Le Foro Côte du Rhone, Syrah, uh, 2009. Uh, now, Jean-Luc Colombo, uh, he's based in Cornas in the Northern Rhone, um, but I don't know whether this is Northern Rhone or Southern Rhone in terms of, um, uh, of where he's getting his grapes from. He's got some of his own vineyards, but he also buys in um, fruit. Now, he's known in the... Uh, um, in the Rhone for being, uh, uh, well, when he first burst on the scene 20 years ago or so, he was known for being a bit too brash and a bit too opinionated, and he wanted his wine to actually taste of fruit uh, rather than uh, just uh, grubby old cellars. Uh, now, here, um, it, it, 20 years on, he's older, wiser, and his moustache is probably still as, as fine as it has ever been, uh, but it's probably got fle more flecked with grey than it used to be. Uh, but still, um, hallmarks here, uh, there's juiciness, there's fruit, uh, but there is also, uh, and he never lost this, this is what his critics they seem to lose sight of, he never lost sight of uh, uh, the wines that should, should actually tell a story about a place. So there is an earthiness, there's a spice coming through, uh, so the first one was more about juicy and voluptuous fruit. Here, yes, there's a juiciness. Yes, there is ripe fruit, uh, but there's ripe fruit, but with freshness uh, and um, sense of place, really. And you're getting that, yeah, lovely, juicy freshness going all the way through. Um, and there's a bit of plum in there. Uh, there's a little bit of orange peel. I always think of uh, orange peel in the in the Rhone as, uh, as being a typical Syrah characteristic. And I like it for its brightness and openness and friendliness. Uh, so whereas the first one was um, the re re reduction, it, it, it's almost like somebody has got a Spanx on. And, uh, uh, and uh, eventually the elastic fades and you, they show, you're shown in your true colours. Here there's no, no need of that, uh, that, that time to, uh, uh, to get uh, flabby elastic Spanx. We like that. Um, okay, still a Rhone influence here, Northern Rhone influence uh, from a guy called Alan Grayo, um, uh, and this is his Syrah. Um, but whereas normally he makes his Syrah in uh, Crow's Hermitage, this is from Morocco, 2009, uh, and it's called Tandem. Now, you know when you taste some Spanish wines and there's this warm, earthy dustiness, um, get that same character here. Um, there's the yeah, warm, earthy, dusty uh, terracotta roof tile. Um, when, when the, you know when terracotta roof tiles get hot and there's this, uh, these little fragments of dust come off them. I, I get that, just that character here. But there is some of the Rhone spice and freshness. 
How much? Yeah, and when you see you see Roan spice and freshness, and it's the same winemaker making it somewhere else, you have to think how much of terroir is actually in the person, and how much is in the ground. Discuss and debate. Well, it's a warm, rounded, rich-hearted wine. It, you can tend, tell it's come from uh, somewhere where the sun doesn't really fail to shine. Um, but still, there is. It, what I like about it is, um, in, in terms of the colour, they've not tried to over-extract it. If I have a problem, another problem with Donny Domingo, they maybe try that a little bit too hard. Here, uh, he's just let the wine be and not been afraid to say, it's warm. This is what this is the sort of wine it gives. Um, so... Um, for me, uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I prefer the prefer the Colombo wine, but um, but that is that is pretty good. Um, final two, uh, we're blends of uh, Shiraz, Mourvedre, and Grenache in varying proportions. They're never blended in proportions to make it MSG on the label, are they? But um, hey, uh, first one, and I've organised them. I'd normally uh, we, we, we've gone so far in vintage order, but. Um, Changing the vintage order here because of alcohol levels, because this one here is 13.5%, next one's 14.5%. So this one here is Domaine La Borie Blanche, a terroir d'altitude, uh, and it's Minervois La Livinière. So Minervois uh, is the appellation, La Livinière is the favoured part of uh, Minervois that, um, that has been deemed uh, sufficiently noteworthy to, uh, to be able to shove its name on, the, on, on labels. So it, it, it says in order here, Syrah, Mourvedre, Grenache. Well, this is relaxing into its bottle. Uh, and uh, where it, it would probably have been once a rather brash, uh, juicy, uh, but uh, slightly hard-nosed wine, now uh, it's calming down. And uh, so you still get the herbiness, you still get the intense fruit, but it's sort of thought, well, I'm not, it's not worth going out and out just to win an argument for the sake of winning an argument. Uh, I'm going to relax, chill, and um, it smells uh, rounded, complete. There's a bit of uh, herby, uh, that you get this sage sausage meat character of Syrah. Um, you maybe get a little bit of meatiness of Mourvedre and the heart of Grenache, but um, it smells good. And that savoury brown sugar, if that makes sense. This is a sweetness and a softness and a savouriness and a herbiness. And the herbiness, um, it's, uh, it's on that wild thyme uh, and it's where it, it goes ever so slightly minty. And um, the, the fruit is underplayed um, uh, and so it's all these other characters that get a chance to shine. It's, uh, it's quite a glossy wine uh, in that it's not showing any rustic characters at the moment. Um, and uh, so you feel a rounded, fleshy flavour in your mouth uh, when you've swallowed it or spat it out, as uh, is my job, that's what I have to do. Um, but um, but it, it, it's pretty darn tasty, and uh, it does capture that southern warmth and dustiness, and um, very, very stew-friendly and sausage-friendly and uh, Simon-friendly. Let's see whether we can say the same about the final wine. So this is um, uh, Grant Burge, the Holy Trinity, and we're in the Barossa in, uh, in, in Australia here. And it, uh, Bar when it says Barossa on there, you, you've got Barossa, uh, Barossa Valley and Eden Valley. I imagine for a blend like this, Grenache, Shiraz, um, it will be mostly Barossa Valley, which is warmer than Eden Valley. And this is uh, big, intense, uh, tar, plum, berry, uh, really rich, rounded and ripe, um, but with this minty eucalyptus end, edge to, um, to keep it from all going that little bit wobbly. Um, I, it smells like it's going to be a far more intense wine than the one before, but is that going to mean a more drinkable wine? I'm not so sure. I, um, I'll, I'd better taste it and see. And it's gone into that, uh, what I call the jammy dodger fruit um, character. I don't remember the last time I had a jammy dodger biscuit. If you don't know them, they're like little circular biscuits split into level of jam in the middle. But in the middle of one of the bits of biscuit, there's usually something like a round or a heart shape or a square. And, and I get that baked jam character here, uh, which for me, as soon as I say baked in any wine wine tasting note, it's not a positive. I want freshness in my wines, as, uh, as I've, you, I've bored you senseless with earlier on. Um, but um, here, 
yes, intense. I like the tar. I like the licorice bits. Uh, I like those other bits. And I wouldn't be surprised that in a few years that it, it, it's really a lovely, charming, old, leathery wine. But I'm not sure whether it will ever be as interesting as the, the, the one before, uh, which has got um, more of the uh, herbiness. It's no, it doesn't feel like it's gone into that overripe character. Uh, and I, 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 it comes for me, it comes down to freshness. Uh, the people who um, try and get intensity of the, of the, in, into their wine at the expense of freshness, uh, for me, are missing the point. Wine's supposed to be drunk, not admired. And uh, just because something is loud doesn't make it good. Not that this is just loud and not good. I think it's a really, really good wine. But um, I prefer the one before. But um, hey, that's me. Uh, but uh, I can only tell you what I think. See you soon.